What is going on, Jeff fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video on this Monday morning after a tough loss on Sunday Night Football, a frustrating loss where the New York Jets did not score an offensive touchdown. They have not scored an offensive touchdown two weeks in a row. They have now scored uh, one touchdown in their last three games, and it came on a check down that Brees Hall took 50 yards. It, it's frustrating times. The offense is absolutely horrible and we've done this after every game so far so we're going to continue to do it because one uh, I think it's therapeutic and number two uh, people like it so I'm going to break down what I thought of Zach Wilson's performance against the Raiders uh, I don't I'll start here I don't think he is the number one reason why they lost this game I don't I think the coaching and play calling rank higher coaching for the the inexcusable penalties to play calling uh, from Nathaniel Hackett I liked in the first quarter. I thought they had a pretty good game plan in the first quarter, and then uh, I, I don't know what happened. Um, and I have some more thoughts on the coaching that I, I think I'll do in another video later today. Um, but again, we've broken down Zach Wilson's performance each time. I, I wanted to keep this one in the loop. Uh, but even with that, all that said, I think some fans are – putting way too much blame on Zach Wilson for this game. And I also think there's another section of the fan base that is hyping it up way too much. I had someone tell me that he was, quote, balling out before the interception. Balling out, I think, is a stretch. He was mo he was mostly good. I am comfortable saying he was mostly good up until that point. But that is a key, key, key mistake. And we'll, we'll talk through the whole thing. Again, the whole we're trying to give as much context as humanly possible. We'll start with the box score stats, 23 of 39, 58.9 completion percentage, 263 yards, no touchdowns, one pick, a 68.6 .6 rating, four rushes for 54 yards as well. Now we'll start with the good. It will go bad, things out of his control, and then just some uh, final overarching stat that I want to hit on. The good was something that I just mentioned right there with his box score numbers, the rushing. He used his legs more. That's something that I've been – really 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 talking about a lot because I think that's when he's at his best is when he's using his legs he did it at the tail end of his rookie season which is probably the best stretch of games that he's had was after he returned from injury his rookie year uh, and there was you know some times where he was using his legs and running for touchdowns and um, just when something's not there, tucking it and run. And that's against the Chargers. He didn't really do that a lot. And I think that was a big reason for their struggles is because he was hanging back in the pocket too long. And granted, again, the offense, not to reiterate two week old stories, offensive line was bad. Hold on to the ball too long. It's a mix of both of those things. But him running and using his legs more is something that I've wanted to see for a while. And I'm glad that he did it. The no look pass to Alan Lazard. Awesome. The highlight real play. He's going to give you a couple of throws like that or a couple of plays like that every single week. That's that's what it is. The big splash plays are there. He has a ton of talent. I am never going to deny, to deny Zach Wilson's talent. The consistency is always going to be uh, the issue with Zach Wilson. And the high-end pl plays and the high-end talent is there. The no-look pass to Alan Lazard was really nice. It was a beautiful play. It was a beautiful throw to extend the drive. Love that. I thought that was awesome. The deep shot early on on Garrett Wilson on the first drive. It was a good throw. It was a good ball. You know, big play, big splash play. That's You need more of that. And, again, in the first three drives of the game, the Jets' offense moved the ball right up until they got into the twenty. Right up until they got into the 20s. It's it's a bad, bad, bad thing. Their red zone offense is so historically bad. I, I can't wrap my mind just around how bad it is, how far away they are from the 31st team in the league, how far away they are from league average. League average is 53% touchdown. They are close to 20%. They are closer to 20%. One out of every five trips to the red zone, they're scoring a touchdown. Instead of half, should be every, you know, instead of two out of ten, it should be five out of ten. They're leaving points on the board for so many different reasons. Okay, the bad, and there are, there is bad from this game. The interception, yes, he made it obvious where he was going with the football. Um, so I'm saying, well, he looked off the, he tried to look off the linebacker. It didn't work. It, it was obvious where he was going with the football. Um, 
you had a there's a Twitter breakdown from Dan Orlovsky explaining this. If you would like to to do that, uh, take a look at that. I, I'm not going to include that in this video because I don't want that's his work. I don't want to get hit for uh, copyright and all that stuff. It's you can check it out um, on Dan Orlovsky's Twitter. But he the interception when you're driving in fourth quarter down four looking for a touchdown you can't have a turnover there and he did and i get it he's he has cut down on interceptions overall right that's his sixth interception on the season in nine games um he hadn't thrown one since denver turnovers are still there though fumbles count as turnovers he has uh, 11 total turnovers in nine games he has five lost fumbles and six interceptions. He fumbled again on one of his two sacks. It was recovered by Makai Becton, thankfully. Uh, but 11 turnovers in nine games. Intentional grounding uh, on second down, on a second down play early in the game. He was stepping up in the pocket, and Max Crosby was coming to make a play on him. And he tried to backhand flip it to some to somebody. It didn't make it back to the line of scrimmage. So that's gonna that's intentional grounding. That backs you up ten yards and is a loss of downs. Uh, the sack would not have been a ten yard sack. It would have been a better opportunity or to just take the sack. And that talks to uh, or points to situational awareness. Uh, and then he had the Lazard miss on the left-hand side. I don't know if that is Lazard giving up on his route. I don't know if that is Zach just way overshooting it. But you had a open wide receiver. Uh, you went that way, and it was not a not a good ball. Um, it was not a good ball, unfortunately. So that that was a missed scoring opportunity as well. Now the things out of his control because there are things out of his control. Drops. Were a factor. Garrett had a drop in this game. Um, drops are, are a factor for him every week. His adjusted completion percentage is going to be higher than 58.9%, which is his regular completion percentage. Understand that. Uh, the play calling is something that is out of his control. I liked, as I said, I liked it in the first quarter. I thought it was awful after that. Uh, and the penalties are mostly out of his control. He's not the one uh, making those penalties or having those penalties. Uh, C.J. Uzama getting put on the field at this point is malpractice from this uh, coaching staff. Uh, and it's just the, the same thing with they have a big play and it's called back on a back-breaking penalty. It feels like every single time that it happens. But the final stat that I'll leave you with this, and I, I don't know if I'm not, I'm not saying if they make a quarterback change, everything's everything's fine and they're going to you know go on this unbelievable run and that a different quarterback wins that game. This is just... This is just a stat with no feeling, just something that we're sharing. And Zach Wilson's last 16 starts dating back to last season, they have 17 offensive touchdowns. That's just over one per game. Um, that that's not good enough, and that's with two different that's two different coordinators, two different uh, wide receiver at rooms and weapon weaponry rooms, um, different offensive line combinations. There's a lot. Of reasons and there's a lot of blame to go around on the offensive side of the ball. This more of the story is they're just not good enough offensively in every and every single facet. They are not good enough offensively. It's a joke. It's actually a joke. Um, that's it. That's my thoughts on Zach Wilson's play from last night. You can comment below. Tell me how wrong I am. Tell me how much of a Zach Wilson hater I am, or tell me how much of a, I give him way too much leash because. I'm sure that's what we're going to see. Let me know your thoughts. I'm Matt. I'll catch you next time.